Hey, what's up, Leroy here. I wanna share with you something that's been on my mind uh, recently and I think you'll greatly benefit from. And that is looking at a color scheme or color combination that I think will work for many of you. So I want to show you the color scheme and then I'll give you two examples of paintings done with that as opposed to some of the other color schemes I've been using. And I want to show you how this one is better in a few ways, okay? So let's get to it. Here is the color scheme that I'm talking about. So I'm referring to quinacridone rose, ultramarine blue and Indian yellow. Now the yellow itself could actually be replaced. You could use lemon yellow. Some would say that would be even better. But for this purpose, I have to be honest, this is the one I've been using recently. Um, so here's what's up. What this palette allows you to do is reach a wide variety of mixes and preserve a lot of the saturation. And the reason why is that because it's one step closer to the cyan magenta yellow combination, for example, that printers use that's basically used to mix whatever you want. Um, so let me show you what I've been using a lot lately is this. It's Perlin Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Indian Yellow. So instead of the Quinacridone Rose, the Perlin Red. The issue that I have with that sometimes is that these two tend to mute each other because there's a lot of warmth in this uh, blue and this is kind of a neutral uh, red. It's, it could even be observed as a cooler one. Of course, it's all contextual and relative, but what happens is these two sometimes lead to not so satisfying purples. Now, when you switch this parallel red with the quinacridone rose, it gives you more of that scale and freedom in the saturation of the reds. And if you want it to be a warmer red, you can actually just add more Indian yellow and it works itself out. Now, some would argue that phthalo blue would play a better role in, in, than ultramarine because it's closer to cyan and I can actually show you, uh, even for example, manganese blue hue or cerulean blue or something like that is even closer to a cyan. But for me, I'm so used to ultramarine blue, that's what I've been using recently. Now, let me show you two examples of every combination. So these are two paintings I recently painted using the new combo with quinacridone rose and I really like how and you can see this hopefully the reds really uh, preserve in a way their um, their strength. Now I have used a bit of pyrrole scarlet here but the vast majority and especially this side is with the quinacridone rose uh, and one more thing I will say Often, if when I've been using more of the pearl and red, uh, it would force me to go very strong on the blues in the darks, and they would end up being being very uh, ultramarine-ish, which I don't always like. So let me show you. Uh, so this is one example, and notice the nuance in color, a lot of the reds, a lot of, but the, the, the grays can still be quite neutral. Let me show you another one, and this one I have shown you, and look at the beauty and the reds here, right? And I will uh, do some color corrections, because the video is, <laughs> I can't use natural light, it's pr a pretty gloomy day. Uh, but yeah, this is, you can tell how this quinacridone rose basically mixes really nicely with the other colors. Now, to be fair, I've brought two examples of that rely on the parallel red mix, okay? And I will show you again all the mixes and all the combos uh, in just a few seconds just to give you a better idea. But I, to be fair, I wanted to bring two paintings that I really, really like and I think I did a good job with. So this is the first one from Squid Game and then we have this one also, the character from Squid Game. Now, I love these, they're absolutely great. The one thing I will say is, again, some of the reds, I had to bring in some Pyrrhal Scarlet to make them brighter and it was really hard to mix, um, to mix a purple that isn't too muted. And you can see a bit of it on the hair and a bit of it on the face. Now, if you look at this one, same thing, but also it has that criticism I've had earlier of how the darks have to be uh, ultramarine-ish to get them really, really dark. That's kind of a constraint for some reason to me personally with the Peril and Red. Now, I did introduce some... Um, neutral tint to solve this, but still it's uh, ideally you want to have that flexibility, right? So these two, as much as you can argue that these two paintings are more detailed and I think more advanced in a way, these still, and this maybe is still advanced as well, but these give me more flexibility when it comes to the color. Okay, so I just wanna give you this as an option, right? You don't have to change your palette right away or anything like that, but have this combination in mind. So let me actually rearrange my desk and I'll show you how these combine together. Okie doke, so I kind of explained the difference between the mixes. Now let me show you because I think this is important to see. So I'm gonna start here and I have Ultramarine, Quinacridone Rose and Indian Yellow just to show you what these kind of work together like and of course if you've been watching the video as you know but I do want to emphasize the difference put some emphasis on the difference so uh, if we start with the ultramarine here 
And in fact, I'm gonna save us some time. And let me actually zoom in here. So I'm gonna do some wet and wet just to get a range from uh, light to dark. Have a few different values. Now, just to save us some time, I'm gonna do the same here for the blue, because it's gonna be the exact same blue, right? And now let me bring in our quinacridone rose, okay? So the quinacridone rose on my pelt is at the very corner, and I think I've shown you this before, it's right here. Um, it doesn't matter the mixing or technique so much, I want you more to see the color combinations here. So look at how vibrant it is, right? It's very vibrant, very saturated, right out the gate, uh, a really good color, and I have some of the blue seep in here. Uh, Daniel Smith, Smith's quinacridone rose has been a long time favorite color of mine, very useful. Um, and then I'll show you some of the uh, Indian yellow as well, get it a little cleaner and pure, which can get quite dark as well, which is something I like. I'm not a big fan of those yellows that can't get too dark. Now, if you mix the two, and I'm gonna show you in just a second in more detail, you can get a much warmer uh, red, okay? Now, this palette here, what you see here is very useful for a lot of different cases, okay? So let me show you some of the mixes here. So if you wanna produce again an orange, um, I'm just gonna move this. Uh, let me show you what this may look like, okay? I'm gonna take a bit of a smaller brush here. And we'll get a bit of the uh, yellow here. And gradually let's add some of the quinacridone rose to it. And you can kind of play around again with the consistency, but let's kind of play at the orange range, right? So that'll be something like this. I know my swatches are usually terrible, so my apologies. I know a lot of people uh, do videos where it's all so clean and nice. I'm just not, that's not, I don't have that in me. Now, as for the green, so I'm gonna show you. Uh, you have a nice range with the uh, ultramarine as well, and I will show you a few more experiments here later on with, um, uh, with phthalo blue, just to show you that other side of the coin, because we have discussed uh, how it can help a bit and maybe get even closer to cyan, to a perfect cyan, and that just nature that enables you to mix a lot more. I'm not, I'm not huge on like the, um, what do you call it, like the um, physics, optics, I guess. Uh, but but you know someone may be an expert and and explain why that is in the chat, uh, in the chat in the comments. I'm so used to doing the live streams. Uh, and here is for the violet. So for here, what we'll get, and this is really important to show you again, let's start with that same blue. And once we add that quinacridone in, look at the, this beautiful, clean, nice purple, right? Now I do want to show you something. So again, the reason I'm recommending this a little more than parallel red, and I'm gonna show you right here, Let's show you the same combination, but with Peril and Red. So this is our Peril and Red. On its surface, it looks quite vibrant and quite strong, but these have a tendency to dry a little more muted from my experience. But the real Achilles heel is gonna be exposed once we add, um, once we mix it with the blue. So, if we take that uh, French Ultramarine, and then I'm just gonna add a bit of that to it. See, it's not huge, but it is noticeable. It's just less of a vibrant purple here. And hopefully you will be able to see it well. Uh, let me actually mix a bit of a lighter version to show you. So, if I'm gonna use both, that's what we get. So it's a quite a muted one. But, if we're gonna go back to our mix with quinacridone rose, and keep it light. Can you see the difference here? It's just impossible to get this with this combination. So you end up really giving up a lot of range. Now, of course, some will say by adding lemon yellow, you will get a better range with all of these, and I may explore that too in, in the future, right? Uh, but what I wanna show you is how you can enhance that even more with some of the um, Thalo blue. So if we have ourselves some phthalo blue here, and then let that mix with our quinacridone, you'll potentially get an even purer, brighter 
nicer mix, okay? Um, I honestly really like the way it looks with Ultramarine. It's not a huge difference too, so you have to understand we're talking really small nuances here. Let me zoom out. So we're really talking small nuances here, right? It's not like a huge difference, but I have to say like this is a big difference and this can mean the difference between a really beautiful bright purple or red even uh, as opposed to this parallel red, which again if, I, if I'll paint next to it you see this one's a few levels above it when it comes to this brightness and strength and saturation, right? And you can add a bit of yellow to make it, uh, and here it is a little cleaner because you'll always have a bit of contamination, right? Um, so yeah, that will be the difference between the two. And once again, just to give off a very quick rough example, right? With these, it's a bit easier to lose that saturation in the reds. Now, you don't necessarily want it, right? That's fine if you don't want it. But I would much rather have the option, especially in the light values, to still maintain that. Which is why I wanted to share this quick tip with you today. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I hope you gain something new out of it. If you have, please let me know in a comment down below, leave a like, uh, it really helps more people find the video, and subscribe if this is your first one, I would be grateful to have you on board. Check out the links in the description box if you want to check out my watercolor course, drawing course, anything else, and I will talk to you again real soon.